Hello everyone. I hope you and your family are safe amid the pandemic. I I welcome you all to this talk on challenges of building a distributed analytics stack. In this talk, I am going to discuss our decade long journey of building and managing a cloud service for data analytics. If there are any questions during the talk, please keep posting them in the chat. We will take all the questions at the end of the talk. About me, my name is Nishant Bangadwa. I am the co-founder and head of engineering at Real Data. Real Data was founded with the vision to provide operational intelligence for data in motion and help organizations gain actionable insights from their data. Real's fully managed Elastic Cloud service is powered by Apache Trade. Prior to Real, I was part of the engineering team at Cloudera and MetaMarkets, where I got chance to work closely with hundreds of enterprise in their data analytics journey. I love designing distributed systems and I'm an open source enthusiast and a contributor to multiple open source projects. A data analytics stack consists of mainly three components, data sources and ETL frameworks used to process this data, data store where the data is aggregated and stored, BI tools which are used to run analytical queries on the data store and provides insights to the end user. In this talk, I'm going to focus on the middle part that is a data store. My data analytics journey started with MetaMarkets when I joined a group of very talented engineers. The team was working on a very hard, challenging problem of providing real-time insights over petabytes of data. After trying many, many technologies, our team took the hard decision of building their own data store with the vision to open source it under Apache license. This data store became Apache Druid. In this talk, I will be talking you through the challenges we faced in our 10 year long journey building an operational data store. I will cover the challenges faced, how we handled them, mistakes we did over time, and improvements we made to our stack. And it takes a village to build a community. And the ideas presented in this talk are a summary of ideas collectively implemented over time from the team at MetaMarkets, Real Data, and the Apache community as a whole. The team at MetaMarkets and Real Data has been continuously running and scaling the MetaMarkets cloud service, which is now owned by Snap from almost 10 years now. It's hard to cover 10 years of learnings in 40 minutes, but I will try my best to summarize the main learnings in this talk. The initial use case with which we started with was to power ad tech analytics product as shown in the illustration on the right. The requirements were data freshness where users need to visualize and analyze the data as it is happening in real time. Interactive dashboards need to be snappy for encouraging data exploration. Subsequent queries is a must. Ad hoc queries for enabling users to select any combination of dimensions and metrics, and then slice and dice the data or drill down further into a given dimensional value. Scalability was needed as it needs to scale up to trillions of events per day. Last but not the least, cost effectiveness. The solution needs to be cost effective at scale. Data volume has, a big has been a big challenge. In ad tech, it is estimated that there are almost 400 billion daily programmatic ad transactions, which is 100 times as compared to New York Stock Exchange trade volume. Not only the number of events are large, each ad tech event itself contains around 100 fields, which is 10 times as compared to a New York Stock Exchange trade event. A cloud service running multiple ad tech clients can easily reach up to a massive scale of ingesting trillions of events and multiple terabytes of data each day. And with the growing estimate of programmatic ad spend year over year, the data volume is expected to almost double every quarter. Providing subsequent queries over such a massive data set is a very big challenge. Here are some of the numbers to showcase the current volume and scale the service operates on. It stores over 10 trillion events, nearly 40 petabytes of raw data that is compressed over 400 terabytes of queryable data. The cloud service is continuously ingesting over 
500k events per second on average. In terms of the performance, we were able to achieve 500 milliseconds of average query time, less than one second of 90th percentile and less than 10 seconds of 99th percentile. The journey began with exploring the existing solutions. The team first started with RDBMS, but very quickly learned that subsequent queries over such large scale is not possible with RDBMS. Each dashboard load time was taking up to a minute or even more. Next, NoSQL solutions were evaluated. Pre-computed results were stored in a key value store. Each query processing became a, just a simple key value lookup. This worked well and the query performance was drastically improved, but computing all the query combinations was not possible as the dimensions were added. It took close to almost 10 hours to compute all query combinations over one hour of data. Real-time insights into the data was nowhere close to possible. After evaluating few other options and exhausting the available solutions, at that time, the team took the hard decision of building their own operational data store. It was later open sourced and moved to Apache Software Foundation. This data store became Apache Druid. Here are some of the key points taken from initial Druid specification. The initial implementation consisted of keeping all the data in memory for low latency reads, distributed data across multiple nodes for parallel processing, keeping the data node symmetrical so that all nodes can take part in the query processing. The initial architecture majorly consisted of two node types, historical nodes, which are the main workforces of the Druid cluster. Historical nodes store data in memory based on a column oriented read efficient format and quickly respond to user queries. Since data is distributed across multiple nodes, Another set of nodes called broker nodes was added for querying. The broker nodes keep track of the data chunks being loaded on each of the nodes in the cluster. They had the ability to scatter query across multiple nodes and gather the results back, merge them, and send it back to, to the user or the application sending the queries. With this initial architecture, we were able to achieve fast data scans and aggregations. Since all data was in memory, the latency for data access was very less. And due to the distributed nature, we could horizontally scale to get to the subsequent query latencies. This still did not solve all the requirements we had, and it had limitations. Due to the batch ingestion, real-time insights were still not available. Keeping all data in memory was also turning out to be quite costly. Here is the improvement made to the architecture to provide real-time insights into data in motion. A new set of nodes called real-time nodes were later replaced by real-time index tasks <clears throat> were added. Real-time nodes did three tasks. First, they handled real-time ingestion by adding support for push and pull-based ingestion from streaming sources. Secondly, they handled queries over real-time data to make data queryable as soon as it is ingested. This solved the problem of data freshness. Third, periodic handoff of data, real-time nodes were stored during the data in write optimized data structure on heap. Periodically, it converted the uh, read optimized time, time partitioned uh, format into write optimized uh, uh, immutable segments and handed over to the historical nodes. The above solution described works well and solve the business requirements. But as we grew over time, bigger challenges started to surface. Cost grew out of control. With the data volume doubling every few months, it was hard to sustain the costs. A monitoring solution was needed to analyze what is going on into the system. Scaling became operationally challenging. Each software update took long engineering cycles. Since it was a multi-tenant service, noisy neighbor was a constant issue, but a manageable one at that time. Let's next talk about the strategies implemented over time to handle those issues. Before we did any performance improvements, we knew we need a reliable system to measure the impact of changes. So we focused on building a monitoring and alerting service. 
the monitoring service was essential part of the system as it allowed us to identify issues quickly, understand user behavior and their query patterns, identify any bottlenecks in the system and handle them as soon as possible. So we started with emitting detailed metrics from each node. The metrics were broadly categorized as JVM level metrics, such as time spent in the GC activity, the heap usage, system level metrics, such as the RAM consumption, disk usage, CPU level metrics, query level metrics, each query processed on every different node emitted various metrics such as data scan time, the time taken to merge the partition results, et cetera. Ingestion related metrics, ingestion throughput, number of unparsable events, data summarization metrics, how much roll up we are able to achieve on, on a give, given data set. Any unexpected conditions on any node would trigger an alert even to notify our operations team who will then handle the problem. These may seem like a lot of metrics, but all of them were essential for gaining a deep understanding of the service. The metrics emitted became very large, as large as a few terabytes every month. Existing monitoring tools were mostly designed to store aggregated metrics, but failed to provide insights at this scale. But wait, isn't the data store we are building for the exact same use case for providing real-time insights into data in motion? So yes, we spin up a separate metrics cluster powered by Druid and dogfooded it with metrics from our production service. This unlocked tremendous value for us. It allowed us to pinpoint issues within the production cluster quickly by providing big picture of how the system health is looking as well as drilling down capability to identify individual parts of the system which were causing issues. It also helped us in getting detailed insights into our user behavior. Next big challenge was cost. I'm clubbing together cost and performance improvements as they are both related to each other. Improving performance means need for less compute and in turn cost savings. The biggest cost challenge was due to the fact that data was still growing and doubling every few months. We kept adding more and more nodes, which led to proportionate increase in hardware cost. With more and more nodes, the probability of failures also increased and added to our operational overheads. Some piece always failed to scale. Thanks to all the smart engineers we had, uh, we quickly fixed those issues and continued on to the battle of scale. In order to put improvements, we started diving deep into the user behavior and their usage patterns. This uncovered some really interesting facts. For ingestion, we observed that daily peak ingestion volume is usually twice as compared to non-peak hours. Raw data was much greater in volume than the aggregated data. Data was frequently delayed and needed reprocessing. Analyzing query patterns revealed Percentage of data queried at any given time is very small as compared to the overall data set. Only a few columns were accessed out of hundreds of columns. Recent data was queried much more frequently than the old data. Large queries created resource contention for smaller queries. A large portion of queries were repeated. 20% of the users sent almost 80% of the queries. We also conducted lots of user surveys and refined the use case requirements even further. We noticed that subsequent query performance was widely loved and critical. Data freshness is a must. Value of data decreases as it ages and the use case shifts from doing interactive analysis to batch reporting after three months of data for most of the users. It is okay to provide daily or weekly summaries needed after half an year of data, that suffices most of the use case needs. With these use case refinements, coupled with the insights that we gained from the metrics cluster, we went to white whiteboard again to put improvements into the data store. Since many queries generated by the dashboards were repeated as users would drill down into some table, then come back again to the original view, we started caching of 
partitioned query results onto broker and historical nodes. We used a distributed memcache cluster for storing our query results. We got great results with it. User experience was tremendous, tremendously improved as more than 50% of the queries were not served from cache. This also reduced compute requirements on historical nodes. We also observed that at any given time, the queries only, only access a small percentage of their data. While keeping all the data in memory is fast and simple, it is expensive. We used memory mapping and let operating system manage our page cache. This allowed us to control costs by providing a simple memory to disk ratio that we could configure. We also started to use SSDs to mitigate any performance impact. This was still much cheaper than keeping all data in memory. While memory map mapping increased our cost effectiveness, memory is still a key component for performance. We benchmarked various compression techniques and found that the cost of decompressing data in RAM is less as compared to decompressing data present in RAM is uh, less as compared to that of paging data from disk. On the fly compression is fast and efficient with recent algorithms. We started storing compressed data in RAM and decompress it only while processing a query. Next came data modeling and lifecycle. Now, this may not seem obvious. Believe me, it's really hard to come up with the optimal data models. And these data models continuously need to be evolved over time. The workload and use cases shift, and it is better to revisit the data models every time there is a change in usage patterns. The illustration here, I am showing a sample data lifecycle and the effects of various modeling techniques. On the very left, you can see raw data, which is almost 100 TB in size, is first aggregated and stored as data model A. This data model A is an hourly summary of the raw data. This data is almost 10 times smaller than the raw data. So overall, just by pre-aggregating the data, you can see 10x performance improvements as well as cost improvements. After three months, since the business use case only requires daily transactional information, so we again changed the data model to provide daily summary of data and only store that. This further reduced the data size from 10 terabyte a day to one terabyte a day. This, we also converted user IDs to hyperloglog since the user level details are not needed anymore. And we only needed to count distinct users uh, for retention and analysis. So just converting this particular column to hyperloglog improved the summarization even further. Even the queries are faster, which involved count distinct because of the approximate algorithms. After six months, the data is again summarized further to weekly level and any columns that are not needed now are dropped. Finally, after two years, the data is stored in an archival storage for longer term. To summarize data lifecycle modeler, it helps to understand usage patterns and impact of data modeling that can potentially reduce the cost by more than 10 times. Another key observation was that the value of data decreases as it ages and the use case shifts from more of a real interactive analytics to a batch reporting after three months for most of the users. So we split the data into two tiers. First tier, a hot tier, which had high compute power and all data was kept in memory. Second tier, a cold tier, which has low CPU and RAM as compared to the overall data assigned to each individual node. Most of the data in cold tier is served from disk. The query performance of cold tier was slow as compared to the hot tier. But since the data was only being queried for batch reporting purpose, it was okay to have slow queries in the cold tier. Support for interval-based load rules was added to automatically move data from hot to cold tier as it ages. Now, this worked well, but we saw another issue here. Long-running queries started to take 
all the resources on the broker and it affected the performance of short hot queries. So we quickly followed up with an improvement of tiering brokers as well and introduced a new two new tiers of brokers, a hot broker notes and a cold broker note tier. The hot broker note was only responsible for serving recent hot data. Cold notes were responsible for serving queries over old uh, aged data, which was cold. A new node type was also added named the router node. The router node intelligently routed queries to hot or cold brokers based on multiple parameters, such as duration of data being queried, age of data being queried, and the source of query, whether the query is coming from dashboards or batch reporting. All queries coming from the batch reporting system were always routed to the cold brokers. In a distributed system, the overall query performance is governed by the performance of the slowest node involved in the query processing. If the cluster load is not uniform, few nodes will quickly get overloaded and severely impact overall query performance. We tried multiple cost balancing strategies over time. The ones that worked were to avoid co-locating recent or overlapping data on same node as they used to, they are usually queried together. Distribution of data that is likely to be queried together as much as possible to increase parallelism, favor co-locating data from different customers. If you have managed a cloud service before, you would already know the importance of high availability. For high availability, we added multiple strategies. First, the data was replicated across multiple availability zones so that if one availability zone goes down, the nodes in the other availability zone can still serve the request. Replication doubles the cost straight away. However, there are some strategies such as cross-tier replication that can be used to optimize costs further. The cloud service at, at MetaMarkets is running from almost 10 years now without any scheduled downtime. Some stretches that helped us over time were early investing into a staging test environment. This is really valuable in testing your releases. Internal metrics cluster that we had also served as pre-production testing environment. We had extensive functional and stress test testing to help avoid any production issues. Rolling upgrade strategies, upgrade each node component independently. Rolling upgrades to one node at a time. Upgrade few nodes, collect metrics for A-B testing for any errors and performance regression before pushing the update to whole cluster helped a lot because anytime we had issues with the release, we noticed it early on as soon as we pushed it to few nodes, uh, the issues surfaced into our metrics cluster. And we could see the performance regressions on or the errors and or the alert conditions which were caused by that. It is also mandatory to ensure backwards compatibility across releases. So whenever you push a change to, a, to, to, to your code, think about backwards compatibility. It is a must if you want to have a system which is continuously running and upgradable. Next one is multi-tenancy. It is common for 20% of your users to take 80% of the cluster resources. It is important to keep the resource usage bounded by keeping the units of computation small and constantly yield resources for any higher priority queries. Over time, Apache Druid has got lots of good features to handle multi-tenancy. Some notable ones are query laning, query prioritization, query timeouts, query cancellation, rate limiting of individual tenants. All these features, when configured properly, can mitigate most of the multi-tenancy issues. 
We also noticed that peak ingestion and query volumes were significantly higher than non-peak hours, up to three times at on, on usual days. Query volume on weekends and public holidays was only 20% of the peak volume. Provisioning a constant size cluster for these peak volumes was a huge wastage of resources. So in order to up use our service efficiently, we built elasticity into our cloud service. The elasticity consists of majorly two areas, ingestion autoscaling. As the data to be ingested increases, we automatically provision more ingestion nodes. Query autoscaling, as the query load increases and the query backlog on the existing node increases, we provision more compute dynamically. As it returns back to normal, we scale it back down. All this is done with the help of Kubernetes-based autoscaling policies that are constantly monitoring ingestion and query performance from our metrics cluster. Next, let's look at the key takeaways. Here are the lessons we learned over the, over the last decade. Understand your users, analyze their query patterns. Use cases should be used to define the product and not vice versa. Trade-offs are everywhere. Data lifecycle modeling, it is a, such an important tool. If you are not doing it today, start looking into it. Performance versus cost optimizations are everywhere. Keeping data in memory or using data tiering or data compression. Track your hardware cost, operational cost, and maintenance time that your team spend over time to keep the, the lights on. Carefully evaluate do-it-yourself solutions versus fully managed solutions. Look at the total cost of ownership instead of just accounting for hardware costs. Elasticity and multi-tenancy are hard, but if configured properly, you can mitigate most of the issues there. You can easily save up to 10x on overall cost with making correct choices. Here are some of the key resources around Apache Druid and real data. If you want to evaluate Apache Druid for your company, you can start now in five minutes by signing up for our cloud service for Apache Druid, link for which is given here. Thank you all for taking time to attend this session. I hope it would help you with your data analytics journey. If, work, if you're working on open source projects, ex, excites you. We are actively hiring across multiple roles at Real Data. Please reach out to me on my email, nishant at the rate realdata.com or any of the, these mentioned social channels. I would be very happy to hear from you. Open for questions. Thank you.